Each one becomes a separate entity, identified by its own name. By this you carve it out of unity. By this you designate its special attributes and set it off from other things by emphasizing space <coughs> surrounding it. This space you lay between all things to which you give a different name. All happenings in terms of place and time, all bodies which are greeted by a name. The space you see as setting off all things from one another is the means by which the world's perception is achieved. You see something where nothing is, and see as well nothing where there is unity. A space between all things, between all things and you. Thus do you think that you have given life in separation. By this split you think you are established as a unity which functions with an independent will. What are these names by which the world becomes a series of discrete events, of things ununified, of bodies kept apart, and holding bits of mind as separate awarenesses? You gave these names to them, establishing <coughs> perception as you wished to have perception be. The nameless things were given names, and thus reality was given them as well. For what is named is given meaning, and will then be seen as meaningful, a cause of true effects, <coughs> as a consequence inherent in itself. This is the way reality is made by partial vision, purposefully set against the given truth. Its enemy is wholeness. It conceives of little things and looks upon them. In a lack of space, a sense of unity or vision which sees differently become the threats which, which it must overcome, conflict with, and deny. So, there's one other lesson where... Sorry, what is that? Oh, no, I this is lesson 184. Okay. I was reading it from the very beginning of it. Yeah. The name of God is my inheritance. And he, he did describe this process a little bit earlier in the workbook, when he, in lesson uh, 136. Um, he has a very interesting uh, paragraph. He says, um, Who but yourself evaluates a threat, decides escape is necessary, and sets up a series of defenses to reduce the threat that has been judged as real? All of this cannot be done unconsciously, but afterwards your plan requires that you must forget you made it, so it seems to be external to your own intent, a happening beyond your state of mind, an outcome with a real effect on you, instead of one affected by yourself. It is this quick forgetting of the part you play in making your, quote, reality, which makes defenses seem to be beyond your own control. But what you have forgotten can be remembered, given willingness to reconsider the decision, which is doubly shielded by oblivion. Your not remembering is but the sign that this decision still remains in force as far as your desires are concerned. Then, one paragraph later, he, he starts <coughs> in with this thing. He says, when parts are wrested from the whole and seen as separate and holes within themselves, they become symbols standing for attack upon the whole successful in effect, and never to be seen as whole again. And you have forgotten that they stand but for your own decision of what should be real, to take the place of what is real. So it's this part whole um, issue that we started to talk about uh, the other day. So, you know, when you think about some of the little books that you're reading when you're little, something like you're just beginning to learn how to read and you read one of these very elementary books uh, 
the boy ran across the street. It's a pretty simple sentence, very basic. But there's a lot of elements of complexity in that <laughs> sentence. The boy ran across the street. It's really quite complex. Uh, it's extremely complex. <coughs> because in wholeness, the, you know, what the is a word that kind of emphasizes the, what follows the, the man, the boy, the girl, the ball, the, the boy. What's a boy? God didn't create a boy. Thomas doesn't know what a boy is. Ran. What's ran? No. Across. What's across? The, again that word, the. Street. The boy ran across the street. So, when we start off to try to really go into what forgiveness is about, and we say, okay, hypothetical situation. There's a white shirt and a fly. Okay, that's, that's quite a construct there. It's quite complex, uh, that, that hypothetical uh, situation. Out of all the whole cosmic uh, explosion of images, we'll say trillions and trillions and trillions. Uh, it really comes down to inclusion and exclusion in the sense that that forgiveness is about inclusion and error is about exclusion. These dynamics that we're learning from one, Lesson 184 and 136 is basically saying that, that it seems like there are these horrific things that happen in time and space that are, to use your word, unforgivable. You know, they're just disgraceful, they're despicable and so forth. And what we're saying from a consciousness perspective or a mind perspective that, that Jesus is teaching that the whole mechanism that tries to pull apart from the whole and set it off and give it a name as if it exists as a whole within itself, which we call part whole thinking. Uh, even when we use the hologram analogy, we can say a hologram, the thing about a hologram is that each individual image contains the whole. We say that the part in a hologram contains the whole. And what this is doing in terms of really getting to the core of things is seeing that, ah, as long as I have a perceptual problem and I think that the parts exist in and of themselves as wholes in and of themselves with properties, be it a fly or a blue bottle cap, um, but this is what the ego is, is defending. It's saying, this, this has existence, and it's terrified of wholeness, which would seem to wipe it out. And this is when we get down to the real depths of forgiveness. Set it off, we were just reading, set it off by a name, by time and space, where does, where does the, it exist in the coordinates of, of the cosmos, uh, all this. We'll give it a name, bottle cap. We'll give it a texture, plastic. We'll give it a color, blue. We'll give it a, a coordinate. Um, this blue bottle cap exists in Nooseville, <laughs> in Nooseville, Australia. So you might say that you're, if you can say, if like Simon saying, I don't get it. Oh, that's not a surprising thing. I mean, I've done these talks uh, hundreds of the time, Krishnamurti did it uh, decade after decade on continent after continent, uh, describing the same essence. But but we're, I just want to let you ahead of time. We're, this is going way down uh, the rabbit hole. 